Chapter 8 I walked uphill on the cobbled path as if it were paved with burning coal, tiptoeing, skipping, and jumping erratically like a dirty rat. I did not want the great gravity of torment to weigh me down. Only a few steps to the cathedral, where all will be forgiven, I told myself. Police sirens were growing louder again, wrapping themselves around me. I was falling to the ground now, immersed in muddy gloom, but picking myself up, wading through the cobbles. Head spinning around. Is this the champagne? Why does my heart feel more religious the closer I am to getting caught? Am I in preparation for judgment? Why all this shit everywhere? Does God know I am the most important? Tracy is different now. She is stronger now. She wouldn't want this pity. Why are all humans so full of pity? Let us think this thought through for once, philosophically, shall we say. Why do you feel pity for Tracy Ohayev? Well, you give death a bad name when you mourn lost lives. Why make death an enemy? Pitying life's vulnerability to death? Pity? That she was fortunate to be given birth to in the first place. From out of the indifferent infinity of atoms, molecules, eggs, sperm, under impossible conditions of life, Tracy Ohayav came through. And she cried like the rest of us, like every other human that has broken the skin of the earth, like a freshly popped blister taking to the air, sniffing out sanctimonious sense, vibrations, heat, beatitude. Cathedral bells ring, crashing down, blow after blow, trickling like jewels slipping through the fingers of Midas. And they do not ask, in being born, who did I take the place of? Do you not see that in this way we are all murderers? And the only way to know good is through the wrongdoings of a man, picking out and stumbling over all the naivetes of the world. How else would one know what is good or not? The good is not already there in the first place, like water. It is found through consequences. The consequences that have no consequences. That is, those actions that only affect the human soul through the grace of invisible guilt. These consequences do not linger about in the real world of objects, but fester in our minds as painful ghosts. That is the only way to learn through invisible guilt. And in the end, guilt is the same as pity, just turned inward. No external event can ever truly judge you. Tracy was killed like an object, fucked like an object. Today, even the face is an object. When was the precise moment where we all put on our perennial masks? The face used to be everything to us, the flat openness of the face, begging a response. A face that folded in on itself and gyrated like the expression found on children's faces. The face that used to say four things. One, do not kill me. Two, caress my face. Cover my eye sockets gently with the palms of your hands or your lips. Three, nothing will help us from suffering. Look how soft a face is. Four, can you see God in my face? Tracy Ohayov didn't really have a face, did she? She was all covered up, just two black eyes motionless like an amphibian. Her eyes were too sharp. They looked out too much and seldom ever looked inside herself. Oh, I feel incredibly sick now. Christ, you cannot love thy neighbor when they are all buffoons. But what am I saying? I have been busy making and collecting things, gathering materials for a new world. We can all be makers of our own world, yes? and there is not an ounce of resentment in the act of creation. And Christ told me to do it. He picked me out. Perhaps I told myself to do it, the God of myself. And in this resurrection I have been born again? Or is it her that has been resurrected? I have been playing God with her, haven't I? And will she love me now? Will he? We will soon find out. At that precise moment I seem to have started urinating inside my trousers urinating all over myself. I let the warm urine flow down my leg. I thought that I might be in hell. I could see nothing, blind. 
a black that did not depict depth or darkness but hung in front of me like an enormous clapperboard or simply a block of matter. Living through such darkness, I no longer seemed to live like a human. There was no action to be taken, no decision, no project one would even desire to fulfill. I breathed the exact same breaths, inhale, exhale, and these exact breaths returned to me eternally as if constantly recycling themselves. This new state would soon be acceptable to me. The atmosphere was sedating me. Soon I will have no memories or values. I will just exhale, look at my breath, and then inhale it again like a child playing with some primitive toy. I had found in the past that each interaction with a human being brought about some worry, some thought, some responsibility. I am too sensitive to interact with people and harbor thoughts which attend them. Talking to people keeps me awake at night. I am not terribly fond of psychology, you know. Worries come from out of the black, like strange deep-sea fishes. Two voices following one another. At that precise moment I heard human voices, distant but clear. One of them said, that should be it, the other responding with, right you are. Immediately following this came four sounds, kish, 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 kish. One by one, each floodlight turned on and revealed a part of the cathedral's skin, making its way from the base of the cathedral to its spires. A journey of light covering 83 meters. We are underwater, in a deep, dark abyss, ebbing helplessly with one flashlight, the light picking up peculiar patches of details as we fall further. We are waiting for a light that is not ours. Somewhere in the distance, or we are waiting for giant jaws to open, too tired to resist. I, the scuba diver, had found something in this dark abyss with my torch. Like a giant octopus from the deep, sleeping dormant on the seabed with old scaly skin like that of a whale's, with treasure chests pushed into its belly, the most intricate stonework falling like dripping oil, guzzling itself to a rhythm akin to the breathing of a monster. The color of old deserts mixed with the possibility of lost ruins farther out. I whispered to myself, I am not in hell. I am simply entering the jaws of it. Because of the absurdity of the earth and its life forms, heaven and hell become the same thing here. I walked into the cathedral with my head down, deformed by powerlessness, like a schoolboy walking into the headmaster's office. I unbolted the latch, and there before me lay a religious expanse.